Hey guys, how you doing? In this video, I'm going to teach you how to paint orc skin two different ways. The first one on Gorzag here is going to be using the airbrush. I'm going to use a very different uh, method of painting skin. In fact, you may have noticed this already. We're laying down some purple. We've got some Games Workshop Nagaroth Knight coming in mixed one-to-one -one with Flow Improver as always. Now, why am I using purple to paint green skin? Well, with the help of the color wheel, I'm going to show you. Now, those of you with eagle-eyed vision will have noticed that purple and green are not directly opposite each other, and therefore most people wouldn't use these uh, to balance each other off. However, if we drill down into this a little bit closer, the shade of purple that I'm using would be Han Purple. Now, I know that the final highlight color I'm going to be using on this guy is going to be something that looks a little bit more like the chartreuse just there and those are directly opposite on the model and so we can get away with this from a color theory perspective. Now don't worry you're not going to end up with an orc that's got purple skin you're just going to end up with something with really nice dynamic shadows to it. So once you've got your purple down this is how the guy looks. Next step we need to add some green to this. Obviously, we do want a green orc. Let's take some Warpstone Glow from GW, mix that one-to-one -one with Flow Improver, and add that to the pot. So we've got a mixture of purple and green in there now, and as you can see, we're going in from a very zenithal kind of style for our highlights here with the airbrush. We're allowing that purple to sit in the recesses. As you can see here, we've got a green on top. If you get something like the arm, for instance, where a strict zenithal is too much, just come in from the side, hit that, and then bam. Towards the end, you've got this. You can see there's still purple showing through on the undersides. We've still got that green coming through nice and strong on the top side. This is exactly what we want. Having that high contrast is going to make this model look super interesting from the skin perspective. Happy days. Next up, add more Warpstone Glow and just do the same thing again. On this mini uh, and on Nickit, the other guy we're going to paint without the aid of the airbrush, you're going to see a lot of the same techniques just reproduced as we build a nice slow uh, progression up through the skin. Now with this pass, rather than doing a strict zenithal, we're going to still come in from the top, but we're going to focus on individual muscle groups. So you saw a second ago, us working the delts and stuff on that one arm. Now we're doing the same here. And, and at the end of the process, you're going to get an orc that looks a little bit more like this. You've got some definition in those muscles and it's going to look a lot more uh, sort of buff and, and, and sort of nasty looking. Now that has some P3 Necrotite Green, again mixed with Flow Improver, and we're keeping that mix going. We're not deviating from that. And again, we're doing the same thing. We're keeping our highlights ever so slightly smaller than the last time, and we're keeping them in the more prominent areas, but we're basically just adding another layer of paint over those same areas to ensure we get that nice smooth gradient, and we're gonna get a skin tone at the end of it that really, really comes together. For the face, we're working predominantly on the upper lip and the eye area. This guy's wearing a big hat, you don't see much of his head, but we're going to do something different with the chin and we'll show you that when we get to the brushwork later on. Next up, <clears throat> do the same. Add in some Flash Gitch Yellow this time. We're not going with the greens, we're really trying to amp up that uh, brightness towards that chartreuse colour. And now we're putting this down on all of the really prominent muscle bellies there, making sure that we've got an area of skin that looks really, really bright, really vibrant. We want that absolutely powerful orc skin hue. There he is. Looking like a boss already, but we're not even done. We're not even close to done. We've got that purple coming through from underneath still. That's giving us that really interesting, deep shadow for this miniature. But let's look at it from the side on. You don't really see it. Now let's get the brush out. And we're going to take some Piggy Purple Ink from P3. This is a great purple ink. Now we've thinned this really, really well with water. We're looking at like 8 to 1, 10 to 1 kind of ratio to water at this stage. And what we're doing is we're just kind of glazing in some recesses. You see there on the midsection, we've got that going on. On the arm, we're painting into all of the recesses. And what this will do is it'll put a very soft shade around our muscles. We're going to come in later on and just sharpen this up a little bit. But for now, what we want to do is just add in a gradual sort of tone uh, between the muscle and the shadow for it. Now, if you get a big pool of it, just go back in with the brush and wick it away. When you're using a wash, it's always a, a sort of back and forth process, essentially, to ensure you've got just the right amount in there. You don't want to flood any of those areas and lose any detail. 
Now I'm going to take some piggy purple ink that's a lot less thin. We've got a little water in it just to help it flow off the brush, but nothing crazy. And now what we're doing is we're painting the deepest recesses and we're just getting a really nice dark, sharp uh, sort of recess shade on those areas. You can see here on the arm, we're coming in there, we're defining that shoulder, we're going to define that bicep muscle. And you want to keep this nice and thin. Don't let these lines be very thick. That's why we put that last wash shade in there, just to allow it to have a, a little bit of a, a bleed out, a gradient across the, uh, the field. And by the time you've done that, you've got something that looks a lot more uh, darker, a lot more threatening, really, because he looks so buff. That's exactly the, the, uh, the feeling that we want. Next up, we need to start getting our highlights on. Now, a lot of this we're going to speed through, uh, but we've got some necrotite green and some flash kits yellow, thinned one to one, and then thinned that, sorry, mixed one to one, and then thinned down to a glaze with water. Now, if, when you're glazing, there's a couple of rules to, to take into account. The first one is to always put your paintbrush from the, uh, the point of least impact to the point of most impact. So in this case, we're going towards the brighter area. Now, I'm just going to let you watch what's going on here. We'll have a quick chat about Twitch and Patreon. Uh, if you guys don't know, we stream four days a week over on twitch.tv forward slash Mohawk Miniatures. Where if you've got questions, you can ask them. If you've got minis that you want to show me and get some feedback on, you can. And we'll paint live four nights a week. We've got giveaways every month. And in fact, this weekend is an amazing giveaway stream. We're painting 4,000 points of Necrons in only 48 hours. For more in-depth videos, written painting guides, and even painting lessons, though, come and join in the community on Patreon. Same thing, Mohawk Miniatures there. You'll be able to find us. Once you've glazed in all of those areas, and you see how we, we got through most of it, we're just working on the arm. What we're looking to do is just thin out some of the areas of wash, help blend that into our green skin. And again, we're still working that least to most impact. By the time we finish this step, we've got a really, really smooth green skin. We're still not finished with those brushed highlights though. We're coming on now with even more flash kits yellow added into the mix that we were using this time, though, it's not thinned down to a glaze. As you work up through the brightness of your highlights, where you're putting less and less on the miniature, you can afford to have a little bit less water in the mix because you're looking for a sharp line and you want a little bit easier uh, brush control, which you can't always get with a glaze. We're focusing here on the higher points of the muscles, things like the big bulging vein on his bicep, points of the elbow and so on. When you get down to the hands, obviously looking at the knuckles, the metatarsals and all of those kind of areas. What we're doing now is we're adding in that extra sort of peak highlight. We've still got one more to do and I'll explain why we're gonna do another one in a second, but there's that work on the hand. You can see the transformation that this is having on our miniature. It's a really big change. And look at that guy now, he looks really polished. You could finish him here if you want to, but there's one more thing I like to do on any model that's got a lot of muscle mass. I'm gonna go one step higher with our highlight, a bit more flash kit shallow. We're gonna outline those muscles again, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna put in some muscle striations. So these are the fibers in a muscle. If you look at uh, bodybuilders or people that are extremely jacked, you'll quite frequently see that they've got these uh, very definite lines in their muscles. This is where someone's like so big and so swollen, they've got very little fat uh, content in their body. You can see those individual muscle fibers. For this orc, I want him to look brutal, hence why we've put these in here. I'm going to add those to all of the muscles that are prominent. So on things like the shoulder there, you saw what it was doing, uh, just putting a couple of lines in, in the direction the muscle would be moving. Uh, for things like tricep, bicep, etc., just put a couple of stripes in in the direction that the muscle belly lies. And if you're ever unsure, go and look at some anatomical diagrams here, for instance, on his lap, the muscle goes vertically, so same this side. And you can just find some good reference material online for that, fill it in as you want. But that's all of the base skin. Now we've got a few extra bits to do to it though. We're taking some screamer pink, we're just gonna paint that lower lip. I really like having a big splash of pink for orcs. We're then gonna take, and this is I think the, the, the real like key to doing orc faces, some Steel Legion drab and we're glazing this out. Now, I'm gonna show you the entire bit of footage for this. It will be sped up as before. And what we've essentially done is we've thinned that out and we're trying to build up several layers, like four or five layers of that towards the chin. Think of it a little bit like giving a guy a five o'clock shadow, get some stubble going on in there. I think it adds a lot of character to an orc's face. I know they don't have hair, but I think the older an orc gets, the more desaturated his skin gets. And for me, it starts with the chin. 
Quarter Paint, really good Instagram artist, is one that came up with this kind of uh, technique and really made it famous, and I really, really like it. Once you've got that down in there, go back to your uh, teeth area. We just base coated these down with some uh, Steel Lesion Drab. We're just using some Aria Paint, a strong tone in there to really just shade in those recesses. Then we're making a mix of Steel Legion Drab and P3's Menoth White Highlight, thinned with a little bit of water and an even mix of those. We're applying some highlights to those areas. So just get a little bit around the, uh, the chin. We're giving very John Travolta-like facial butt. Uh, sorry, John, it's, that's, that's the way it is. Uh, and just making sure that those are highlighted up a little bit, going around the sides too. And the same, the teeth will get exactly the same kind of progression of highlights. Very simple to do, very easy. The next thing we want to do though is we want to, we've got a separation between his upper uh, jaw and the lower jaw and the way to fix those back in now that we've added those glazes in there it's just come in with that skin highlight and just join those two up so the same thing we use for the last bit of our skin add that in there and then you've got a very uh, smooth transition from one part of the face into the other there's those teeth like i said just keep adding more menoth white highlight to that thin it a little bit for ease of use and just paint up your teeth i think i did about four different highlight passes on this working gradually in more and more of that menoth white highlight and it really gave it a really bright uh, stark contrast to the rest of his face nope we didn't go up to actual white for the lip, we're adding in some Empress Children, thinned ever so slightly with water, and just putting in a few little lines on that uh, lower lip. Really gives him a lot of personality, gives him a lot of character. It makes it look a little bit more 3D as well. So I'm a big fan of that. There's our first pass at Orc Skin. This is Gorzag, and I think he looks great. But if you don't have an airbrush and you're wondering, well, this is all great and all, but what do I do? Well, we're going to show you on Nickit. Nickit's his little grot buddy. I'm going to do a different kind of skin workup for Nickit entirely. So here he is. We've got a mix now of War Flesh and War Boss Green. One to one mix, then thin it down with water. You're probably going to want to do at least two coats all over the mini with this. So we'll just sort of speed through that section in a second. You need a really good base coat for all of this. So there it was after one coat. As you can see, not particularly vibrant. Needs a little bit more punch to it. Overall, we're going to keep the uh, shadows for this guy a little bit more desaturated. So we're not going with purple. We're not doing anything crazy on this guy. And then we, what we will do is we'll take a load of yellow. We'll build that into our uh, mix. And we just keep adding a little bit more every single time we do a pass. So we've thinned it quite well with water. We're not working with a glaze. We're just working with something that is quite thin paint. Uh, a little bit more than normal to provide a nice soft transition. I'm going to speed through all of this now and you'll see several uh, times we go over the same area. Now what that does is uh, just builds the opacity a little bit. When you're using paint this thin, one pass isn't going to give you a full coat. You know that from trying to base coat a model with two thin coats anyway. If you're using paint this thin, you can just go back in over the same area, hit it again and build that opacity. That way you're going to get a nice smooth gradient on something without having to just keep mixing up a new level of highlights. You see we're going right over the arm and the back again with exactly the same color. Nothing has changed. By the time we get two thicknesses of that down on the miniature, it'll have better stick, it'll have better opacity, you'll see more of it, and therefore we'll get those nice smooth finishes. So that's the first highlight coat, and then we just keep doing a lot of the same. We're going to skip a lot of this, but we add more flash gets yellow, you start working on the areas that are more prominent. So here, obviously, he's got a gigantic nose. That really needs to get some uh, highlights on it. And then again, you work towards the top part of the muscles where the natural highlights would fall. So shoulders, bicep, tricep, anything that's a little bit more sort of stuck out than anything else. Make sure you get things like your fingers and so on in there. With the back, notice my brush strokes. Again, we're working from the area of least impact, so the darkest area up to the area of most impact, i.e. the brightest area, because we're painting on a highlight and just keep working those in with this coat until you think you're in the right place. Then add even more flash kits yellow. Again, keep it nice and thin. You don't, don't want really thick paint for this. You wanna make sure you've got a nice smooth application of paint and work through the same areas. Again, keeping this coat of paint ever so slightly smaller than the last one to allow that smooth progression throughout. As you can see, as we get around to the areas on the back, the, the wider areas, still moving our brush in that direction to enable the brightest point to be at the very top and the darkest point here of least impact at the very bottom. And here he is. There's Nickit. So far, maybe we had another one. Yeah, there we go. There's another highlight thrown in there. And here are the two together. They don't look worlds apart. They can 
considering they've had a completely different uh, brush workup and airbrush workup, I think they look pretty good together. Hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Like, comment, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.